Yo, what's up? This is Parker from Visual Season. We got a lot of love from the last tutorial we put out about color grading, and today I wanted to tackle something that I don't really see a lot on YouTube or really anywhere, and it's editing red files. I know a lot of people don't have access to a red or just never have a budget to rent one out. Um, I'm definitely fortunate enough to own one and have all this footage, so I wanted to kind of look out for everybody and kind of show you guys what it's like to edit red files, the latitude you get, the extra controls that you have over it versus usually uh, normal footage like from an A7S or a GH4. So all the clips I'm using today are going to be in the link in the description to download. They're free to use. Um, you can do whatever you want with this footage. Um, all these videos have been released, so this, I mean, everything is fine to use. Um, so what's really cool about red footage and that a lot of people don't really know about um, and I definitely didn't know this until I owned one, was that you can you can do a lot more than just grade it. You can change a lot of the settings that you would be only able to change in it in camera on a you know on a DSLR or really anything besides red. So before we even get into this, to access the secret menu, um, you need to select all the clips. We're gonna right click and go to disable master clip effects, and this is gonna kind of open up the file for us to access. Um, so we're going to go in and see this thing called source settings. We're going to click that. So we have this cool little menu now. And everything is intuitive with the red. Um, so I can go in and change the ISO. I can change the color space. I can change literally about almost everything. Um, which is crazy because I don't really know any other camera that does stuff like this. Um, I can go in and change the white balance, the tint. I mean, you can literally go in and dial in, um, you know, whatever image you want to as if you were still using you know the camera so it's really cool so the first thing that I recommend anyone to do and if you're not doing this and you want to red then you know that's <laughs> there's definitely an issue with this um, you need to go in and make all the footage log so what this is gonna do I'll just show you guys right there see we're gonna get a super flat profile now um, versus what we had before so what the camera does is when you use the camera, like when I was shooting this, I didn't see it in log. I saw it in this red gamma three, which is just basically like a curves adjustment that is applied to the footage in camera just so you can judge exposure better and it's not super flat and muddy, um, which is great in camera. But once we go to grade, we definitely want to have, you know, the most detail we can. So we're going to go in, make all of these log real quick. So we'll go to the second clip right here, source settings. Go in, log, OK, and again for this one, source settings, and make this log. Dope. Cool. So now we have these super flat images. They don't look too hot, but the final result is definitely going to be a big improvement over what we saw um, in, the, in the raw file. So let's go in and make an adjustment layer. And I'm just going to kind of go through a rough workflow of working with red footage, obviously. Like I said before, if you have a colorist or you know someone on, on your team who's going to really dive in and just take down this footage and make it amazing, you know that's a great option. But just to have this footage look usable and not like shit, um, we definitely need to add some sort of contrast. Um, so let's add that curves adjustment. Cool. Uh, we can really just have an umbrella adjustment layer over all these. We're not really going to be selective yet just because all these really need contrast and so we can kinda we don't have to do f clip by clip because this effect really needs to be applied to all of them at the moment so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw an S curve which is kinda the default curve that I mean most people use it's gonna add some nice contrast in our shadows and our highlights and we're literally gonna be drawing it S so you can see our curves adjustment is now an S so if you look at this footage now it definitely has some detail to it. It's not so dead and muddy, which is awesome. So that's a definitely a solid place to start um, with the footage. The next thing I like to do is add a LUT. And what's cool about using red footage like this that's raw is that we're going to be able to dial in, we can go back into the source settings and dial in, dial in like the ISO, dial in the white balance. We don't have to, you know, keep with what we have right now, which is cool. So once we grade it, we're still, we know, we're still not done. We can still add a lot more to it. Um, so let's go in here. Let's get a LUT. 
And I'll also include this LUT in the uh, description as well for you guys to use. Cool, awesome. So now we have a really nice looking image. A lot of contrast now, a lot of detail. Shit looks real nice. Um, so cool. So we're pretty much there. Um, there's just a few things. One, this clip I feel is a little too dark. Um, this clip I feel like is perfect. And this one is just slightly darker. So just to go in and show you what we can do, let's go into the source settings and let's change the ISO. Let's make it 640. Okay, that's pretty wild right there. Let's not go that high. Um, really, let's just go down to like 400. We just need a little, there we go. That's pretty solid. And we can go in, you know, splice off this adjustment layer and just focus on this one clip and definitely dial back in some shadow detail just to get that back. So let's do that. Boom. There we go. Perfect. So now we have the detail in her face and we still, it was kind of a, it was weird. It was sunny that this day that we shot this, but it was also like, I don't know, something about shooting in Malibu. It's just really kind of cloudy all the time, but it's still sunny. So the, our, our highlights aren't really blown out like they seem to be, but um, we're definitely not getting that much detail in there, but that's fine. Um, because we got all of the shadow back in her face, so we can't really... I mean, we definitely could go in um, and Da Vinci and, you know, dial in these highlights back. But I kind of like this blown out look behind her. Um, so we're going to keep that um, right here. This was like, for some reason, this was perfectly exposed and everything. So there's not really much I would change about this. But let's just see if it looks any better if we maybe add some little bit of ISO to it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. We can definitely keep something like that. It's not bad at all. Um, and same with this clip. Let's go in and just push the eye so just a little bit. Get some more detail on his face. Cool. Okay, so pretty basic. Um, the cool thing is all we're, everything we're doing too is non-destructive. And what I mean by that is, let's say you go on this and you go and you go in all these clips and you say, you know, all this stuff looks terrible. You don't want to use it. You don't have to completely just like, um, you know, command Z all the way back to the front. We can go in back to source settings and then um, reload from RMD, which is basically going to reset this back to what we had when we first opened this. So if I click on that, we go back to all the same settings. So if you just go in here and you were just, you know, fuck up all the settings, go like this, go like that, start going around like this, you know, this image looks terrible. <laughs> okay, so we do all this and that's our image, you know, it doesn't look so hot. So we're going to go back in, source settings and reload from RMD, which is cool. So everything's non-destructive. So anything I change is not really a locked in figure and we're not set to those kind of options, which is really cool. So you can really go and experiment and then just always just reload from RMD and start from scratch. And so it's kind of kind of cool to be able to do that. You're not really locked into one canvas. Um, but again, all these settings on here are the same as if you were using it in camera. I have access to all these inside camera. Um, some of these like HDR track we can't use because this wasn't trying HDR. Um, but everything else is pretty fair game. Um, we can go in, get a custom white balance going on, you know, just like that. And we have like a workable image. So it's crazy, you know, how intuitive Red was, you know, working with Adobe and creating this system because I've never really seen anything like this before um, in any sort of editing platform or with any sort of brand. So this is really cool and, you know, definitely opening some some doors for some different companies in the future. I'd love to see, you know, Sony, like with their A7S three, possibly have settings like this in the menu, you know, if that was, you know, if that camera is able to shoot raw. Um, you, even the GH5, if they release an update, that would be dope too, if you could shoot raw as well. And they have these settings, like I think this is really important to, you know, definitely get everything right on the day of shooting, but to be able to go back and know that you're not fucked completely and that you can change settings is something that's really special. And I think 
you know, I definitely try to make sure I get everything in camera, but, you know, sometimes either with timing or the weather or a constant change of lighting, you know, you can't really get the perfect settings you always want. So to be able to know I can go back here and change the white balance, change the ISO, fix anything that I need to that's going to make my image the best is something that's just really important. And that's the whole reason that I've been sticking with red and haven't really felt the need to go with anything else. I mean, this they really have a solid product. And I know it's super expensive, but if you ever are able to just rent one out just for a day, um, you have a budget for a shoot, I mean, definitely get your hands on it and try it out. Um, it's definitely really expensive, but it's totally worth it just to get the experience and try it out and see, you know, if you like it or not. It's definitely not a perfect camera, but it definitely has some, you know, some features and some settings that a lot of cameras aren't even touching right now. So that's pretty important to me. But anyway, I hope you guys liked this tutorial. Please leave in the comments what you want to see next. Um, again, I just wanted to make this just because I know a lot of people don't have access to red files or, you know, a red camera. So I wanted to give you the option just to mess around with these files and just see what you can do with them. And I'm super stoked to see what you guys come up with. Um, there's a lot of options here with coloring with all these three clips. So again, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.